TSM will be coming off a win here at the Mexico Major, their first of the tournament, and a chance to grab another one right now. This is it. This is their last game. They're well, one in five now so far, but the liquid win over the first place team in the group, not too shabby. No, I mean, they're happy with that. You heard Bolo uh, getting excited about it. So, <laughs> yeah, if they can get another one on the board, I think they'll they'll be happy about that. This is going to be one where their opponents are maybe going to be playing a little bit more seriously, going to be playing some more important operators, because for Empire, this is such a huge game. Look at the standings right there. Invictus and Empire is the race for second place in Group D, and Empire are two points behind. That means the three points that they could potentially scrape up against TSM are going to be huge, because that'll vault them up in a second. Team Empire have the ability, or sorry, not quite the ability to vault up into first place. They're just fighting for second. As many points as they can possibly get is good, but Invictus arguably have the hardest road to worry about today because they not only face Team Empire later, but they've also got a game against Liquid, and I think the game against TSM, or the, the one that we just saw between TSM and Liquid, is a pretty good indicator that they won't take that one seriously, but Liquid do have to pay more attention to Invictus, so this game matters a lot. Yeah, especially if Invictus manages to beat Empire in regulation, that last match between Liquid and Invictus this will determine first place. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of scenarios that can still shake out here. Now, if there's some sort of overtime win-loss, then that liquid IG game may not be as serious. We'll see. Like, there's still a lot to play out here. But for Empire, they need to get it done here. They, this should be a very serious game for them. They can take this win. They can move into that second place position. That will make it much harder for IG to get out and will also mean that Empire doesn't have to achieve like a regulation victory potentially against IG in order to make it out in second place. Yeah, I mean, let's make it clear too. Liquid's a fun team, right? But the cyborgs don't mess around. They're going to be taking this one. Except for this, uh, what, the, the, the Empire you mean? Yeah, well, the Cyborgs, Empire, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, is what they're known as uh, in the community because they're just so stone-cold serious. They will yep. get the job done, <laughs> and they are, uh, they're they're kind of ridiculous in their mechanics. I think they've yeah. been, Dan has been a huge player so far, I think, in the group stage so far. Joystick had a great regular stage of EUL, and he's been playing fine as well, I think, so far. So I think Empire have, uh, have looked pretty decent, obviously not on the same level of Team Liquid, but even those games that they lost against Liquid were both 7-5s. So they're right there up them, uh, or with them even if they're not up there with the points. Yeah, we haven't seen a whole bunch of Empire on A-Stream as of late, but it is, mm -hmm. it, it's is—it's interesting because both of the times that Liquid and Empire played were on the same map. I honestly don't think that the TSM rematch is probably going to follow in a similar suit just because the implications are obviously different. Empire just hasn't been like the best team in Siege for a really long time. Technically, you could call them like defending major champions because we haven't had a, an in-person major since Raleigh. <laughs> but Canceled three of them? Yeah, a whole bunch of other ones that we've missed since then. But the issue with that is also they have a lot of changes that they've made since that roster. It's always on the team. It's not Karzjeka. This is nowhere even near the same Empire team that dominated back in 2019. Yep. And let's get into the veto to see if we are going to see a similar matchup as we have experienced previously between TSM and Empire. So last time, TSM started the map ban phase by banning their best map, Cafe. This time, they're not going to do that. They'll ban out Coastline. That's a much more strategic ban. That's one that Empire, I think, would have done really well on. They're on a five-game win streak on Coast. Chalet is Empire's perma ban. They do not play this map, so that's very much expected. Clubhouse is the map that TSM already lost to Empire earlier this week. They don't want a repetition of the map. This seems like a very serious ban phase. There goes Cafe. As I mentioned, TSM's strongest map. That makes a lot of sense coming in from Empire. There goes Villa. Those were the three bans I wanted TSM to ban. I think we're going to end up on Oregon, if uh, if my guess is correct here. No, we'll go Consulate instead. That's okay. fair enough, I suppose. We've seen so much Consulate Empire this tournament. Empire have played a lot of Consulate. Obviously, they played against Liquid twice. They, were, they did lose both, but uh, even still, they, they looked pretty good, I'd say, in those games. Um, and TSM just played Consulate. They just beat Liquid there. So that's got to imbue some confidence. I don't know if maybe Empire were watching that game and they saw some weaknesses they want to exploit. I don't know if TSM will be playing the same way as they played against Liquid. But uh, interesting choice by Empire regardless. That TSM-Liquid game was pretty aggressive from TSM overall. And there were a, a lot of Cyclops-esque uh, moments of being very fast, very aggro, spawn peeking in random moments, C4s at different times. And their defense was also pretty heavily locked down. That was the only time where Team Liquid managed to find any footing was kind of exposing some of Team, uh, sorry, some of TSM's gaps overall. Still didn't really make that much of an impact as TSM still won the thing because Liquid weren't playing that to a T. This is where Empire needs to play it to a T because for all intents and purposes, this is your free win. 
This yeah. is what you need right yes. here in order to be able to climb up at the yeah. standings. So do not, under any <laughs> circumstances, throw this away. Yeah, and Liquid, or sorry, TSM rather, in our last game, you talked in advance about how Achieved was the player on the roster that you think had done the best throughout the tournament. Was there anyone who stood out to you in this roster in the last game in particular against Liquid? A Bolo, probably. Probably, I mean, yeah. Bolo with his entry, his aggression, you see him on screen now. He was going for those spawn peaks. He was challenging windows. He had no fear. And it really did help him out. I'm sure the confidence boost of like not having any real pressure on these games has helped them out quite a bit. We've seen that in teams like Damwon Kia, of course, already at this major, where the lack of real any uh, implications means they can run around, have fun, and get aggressive. And sometimes that's exactly what you need to empower your play and uh, actually get yourself to win. They're uh, over here talking with, uh, with the casters right now, back and forth a little bit. And just a little bit of a pregame huddle before they actually get into the action. And I, I think they should have some things prepped for a team like Empire, just because the, the main point that you can take away from a team like Empire is they will play their game and not worry about what their opponents are doing. Mm -hmm. TSM, to a certain extent, can kind of play in both facets. And I think when you already understand what a team like Empire is going to do, TSM should have a pretty decent understanding of what is going to be required to knock Empire off the game a little bit. And I think the map end phase was actually a pretty clear indication that TSM understand this match is a lot more important than their last match, mm -hmm. right? At least for their opponents, they understand that Empire want to play a serious game. They want to. They don't want to make anything unfair which I think is, is, val is valid, right? So for TSM, they're coming into this one, they're banning the maps that make sense, they're gonna take them to an even map. I expect that TSM will play this a little bit more, or a little bit less aggressive. I think they're still gonna try to uh, maybe throw some curveballs at Team Empire, but I expect to see a good game. All right, let's shift over to Empire because we have hardly seen them at all mm -hmm. here on the mainstream. They've been mostly duking it out on the Bravo stream. And this is a team coming off the Six Invitational that was extremely effective in best of ones. I, I think they went eight and two. They topped their group uh, before having a bit more of a struggle in the playoffs in best of threes. Um, we are seeing them struggle more in this in the best of ones this time. That said, it has been against Team Liquid, who has been, for the most part, barring last game, which wasn't entirely serious, really rock solid. So is there, if you're an Empire fan, is there anything that's concerning you right now compared to their SI performance? I don't think there's any big deals. I think Empire have always been a land team, right? That's been historic throughout their entire existence. And I think SI proved that in the group stage. I think even now, like, as we mentioned, they did lose to Liquid twice in regulation, but it was 7-5, 7-5. If you're an Empire fan, you likely watch those games. And you know, Empire looked pretty solid in those matchups. I do think Empire's place in the standings right now sitting in third isn't indicative of their overall skill. I think you look at these players, and sure, if you're just looking at the stats, maybe Joystick's fallen off a little bit, but I think there's been a bit of a change in role for him, where he's kind of allowed Dan to take more of the aggressive operators. He's been pulled back to play a little bit more Jackal, a little bit more Roam Clear, so I really don't think there's anything to be too worried about for Team Empire. If they come in and they lose this game, then you're panicking, then you're sweating, but I, I don't expect it, to be honest. Empire are one of the teams in EU who play more of that structured step-by-step -step style overall because they understand the way in which they need to beat their opponents the, like, the best, so to speak. They have a very clear picture of what a victory looks like round over round, but in this case, you're not playing the same map that you played against TSM the last time. So it's, again, not a matter of counter striding against your opponents. It's figuring out which of the strats that we do have in our deep pockets that's going to do better against a team that has a couple of weaknesses and a few holes. TSM have some pretty obvious issues with mid-round decision-making, figuring out who's supposed to be droning. In fact, who's really even meant to be playing which operator in some occasions, which are all things that Team Empire probably don't even need to worry about that much because they're all issues TSM doesn't usually have. Mm -hmm. Empire, in their own heads, probably we think they should be able to play their own game and just let TSM fall apart by themselves. Right. I mean, Consulate is a map that can have a lot of very basic attacks, a lot of simple attacks. You look at the garage and you could really just walk in through garage and get your plant down. There's really, I mean, you don't, you're not forced to clear that whole map. And for Team Empire, if they recognize a situation where they don't need to overclear, they don't need to waste a bunch of time with the roamers, they will take that opportunity. They're perfectly happy to go for a simple push. They'll go for it time and time again. And it can get punished at times, sure. Like, I mean, that's there, there's a reason why those aren't always played by the best teams. But Empire make it work. And I really do respect the fact that Empire aren't committed to doing everything every single round with the utmost complexity. If it's simple and it'll get the job done, they're okay with that. Well, while we give Empire a moment to warm up here before the match, obviously TSM coming in quite warm after their win over Team Liquid, so we do like to give the teams time to make sure their mechanics are on point before getting into the server. Uh, for Empire, was there any, any concerns you had based off of the Liquid losses? Did they look weak in any particular area? 
The fact that both of them were 7-5, I think, is a decent enough indicator that both of them were close. This is, unfortunately, an area where we simply aren't able to watch every single sure. game that happens before right. a stream goes up. Um, I'm not super concerned overall, though, because Empire mentally seem like they're always very checked in. The only two real big glaring errors were that both of those losses to Liquid were 7-5. Every other time that they've appeared in Group D, the Group of Death, they've always looked pretty darn solid. And it, it, the only thing that I, ha I really have a problem with is just understanding that they only have five points to the first two days, and this team seems like it should be a better representation of that. Yeah, I, I mean, I doubted Empire a little bit coming into this. I did feel that their some of their setups and some of their attacks were not uh, at the same level as what we were seeing from other Tier 1 teams, and, or I should say, like, first seed teams coming from yep. other regions. I was a little bit worried about them, but they're playing the group stage. hasn't really added on to that for me. I do feel like they are playing really good Siege overall. 275 losses to Liquid is not a big deal for my mind. And I, I went back, looked at the stats and stuff. It's not like they were struggling on one particular side. It was relatively even. You know, their defenses were a little poor in the first game. They got a lot better in the second game. You know, it's whatever. There's no glaring weaknesses, at least. If they get out in number two, mm -hmm. and you believe that Liquid are the favorites currently to, to win the entire major... Where do you see Empire ending up? Is this a semifinal team? Is this a top four team? Might be a quarterfinal team, honestly, because if they're looking for second place and you understand the teams that are kind of slated to get into first place, a BDS yep. kind of thing, if it ends up being a BDS Empire quarterfinal, that's a game I see yep. BDS winning overall. So, so Empire, if they get, go out in second place... If we were to make some assumptions, mm -hmm. it would be, well, it would definitely be BBS, okay? Could could face BDS. Yeah. Uh, it will probably be SSG. Um, could be, yeah. It most likely will be SSG, to, you know, unless Fury has an excellent day today, right? Right, right. Um, so I'm just asking you, like, up against their possible opponents, who is Empire capable of beating? Because it, it it's probably going to be Dark Zero. So... Empire against North American teams, I think, has kind of been more of a struggle because I think they, they self-admitted in a press conference saying that games against teams from North America, they don't really understand what NA teams do in some occasions. It's very much, to Dan's explanation, they go around the map doing random stuff and we can't find ways to counter it. And against Dark Zero, that was kind of proven because they've already lost to Dark Zero once. They have that game to go back and do again today, so we'll see if the trend continues. But if it happens in a best-of-three format, I think Dark Zero will reach into their pockets a little bit more and find something else to really come after a team like Empire with. The team they probably have the best chance against somehow might be their EUL counterpart in BDS. No. No? No. I what mean, do you think? Sure. Team Empire got seed one in, in the EUL league, right? And BDS got the fourth seed from EUL. When those teams played, it was a 7-0. I mean, BDS stomped <laughs> those guys. Never mind. I don't think Empire <laughs> take down BDS. I don't think they take down SSG. Dark Zero or Dam One, I mean, maybe, but I think even that's going to be tough. All right, so quarterfinals looking like, given the current uh, form of Empire, might be the limit they can go to. they got to get out of the group first. And to tell us whether they will get out of the group, or at least the start of their journey today, they'll have a couple more games later, are Intero and Kickstar. Well, thank you very much. This is a huge game for Team Empire, for TSM. Stakes are significantly lower, right. but there's pride on the line for them, and it is entirely possible that TSM could finish third in this group with a victory here and another loss from Empire later today. So I guess there is kind of something on the line, even if it's just pride. Yeah, pride is worth fighting for, I suppose, in this context. It is a competitive game, after all. And you can mess with the chances of Empire, if that's something that you value. So TSM looking to upset Empire's run and their potential at the playoffs. You just want to be a, you just want to be a part of the hug. You ever just want to be a part of the hug? Just have something to like, feel so you know that you can like feel something and feel alive. No, partner. Loved. No. Me neither. I just was wondering if you did. Sorry. Okay. There you go. And they dropped the TSM win. And they are fully prepared, psyched up, and ready you for should this. should have dropped that the four times prior. Oh, yeah. That would have been a good idea. Yeah. They could have made it into the playoffs, in maybe, theory, maybe if they had done that. To, maybe we would have changed the results of the match. A little bit. On the other side of the coin, you've got Team Empire. And Team Empire come in still in a heated race against Invictus Gaming with that final spot here in Group D very much up for grabs. Right. The landscape of Group D is not what we thought it would be. Originally, the assumption would be that every single team would be competitive. But due to unforeseen circumstances on TSM's side of things, Merck unable to attend the event. TSM bottomed out very early on and were, in fact, the third team to be eliminated making it to the playoffs here at the Mexico Major. 
Yeah, and I gotta be Frank Parker. Uh, they just got their last, their, their first win and their last match just now. And uh, even in that match, they did not look like the TSM that you would expect at an event like this. And it, yeah, we brought it up multiple times, but recovering from the lack of a Merc is not easy. Yeah. A huge hole in their lineup, not just in terms of what Merc does, but also having the Apojo to sub in last minute. And I mean, as a coach, he's going to understand everything, but... <laughs> he wants two. He wants two. He said he got, we one. got one. We want two. I mean, we'll All see. Right, Jason. And again, if they do win against Empire, who is currently making a run for those playoffs, then they can upset Empire's chances at making it into the playoffs in the first place. So this is a huge map for Empire, to be clear. The amount of pressure that must be on the shoulders of Empire today is immense. We've already seen some historically strong teams buckle under pressure at previous events. You have to imagine that with the struggles that Ninjas in Pajamas and G2 have had at this event, that they are both certainly feeling the pressure. But for Team Empire, well, you've got a legacy that you're still trying to build off of. You had a yeah. great run throughout some of 2019, but then it flamed out relatively quickly and the landscape of Rainbow Six changed. Empire seemed to be back in form. They seemed to be fighting at a higher level than they were previously. The roster change that they made, bringing in all of us, seemed to help them. Yeah. But as tough as this group is, I don't think anybody saw Invictus being as strong as they have been so far. In fact, I don't think anybody's seen APAC doing this well. I was about to say just that. And, and spoiler alert for all of you, by the way, as we now go to Consulate 4, Michael, you're in my fourth time in a row. Yeah, last two maps of yesterday, first two of today. What a start. Woo! Spoilers for those of you that aren't watching the B stream. CAG and Team BDS were playing against each other and it went to overtime. And because it went to overtime, Cyclops picks up a very valuable point mm. that basically clinches their spot in the playoffs. It is still statistically possible for Team 1 to make it, but the likelihood of Team 1 making it means that they need to win both of their matches and with the round differential, they need to ensure that they are winning the matches about 7-1 or 7-2. Yeah, I mean... And beating Cyclops 7-1 seems like an almost impossibility, but that's something that I'm sure that the B stream is going to be talking about because that's where that match is being played. A reminder for you, if you'd like to go over there and watch it, twitch.tv slash Rainbow Six Bravo. That is this, the URL that you're looking at right now, twitch.tv slash Rainbow Six. Just had a Bravo at the end. Band phase is almost completed, and here on Consulate, Empire will be starting on defense they get the first and the last band. TSM's bands were Thatcher and Echo. Valkyrie, unsurprisingly, is the other defender band to join with Nomad. All right, band's done, and we get into Consulate. Uh, it's both of the information operators dealt with on the defense there, two of the more substantial ones for this map. We've been seeing Echo played very well by many teams on Consulate recently. Valkyrie, a no-brainer. Same with the attacking operators. It will mean that Jackal is in play, and he is a potent force on this map. Lots of roaming on Consulate. You do need to extend yourself out to slow down that attack as much as you can um, on pretty much any site on this map. Attackers need to locate and It'll be the top floor for Empire to start things off. It's known that uh, North America is not too fond of this top floor. Maybe Empire is hoping to leverage that on the defensive side. We'll see. If it works out, um, so far in the operator selection, nothing surprising whatsoever. Of course, with well, my in play, you can double up on that denial, but Empire will choose not to. Lots of hard destruction for TSM, I will say. A Thermite and an Ace. They've been putting Bolo on that Ace roll re mm -hmm. reliably. Yeah, After the Zofia nerf, yep. Zofia being one of Bolo's most played operators. Five seconds I don't know if it was a deliberate move to put him on a secondary hard move. I think it's an interim type deal while they while they find where they like him to be in the end. I mean, he's he's got the AK-12, really great gun. Uh, technically, those summons, they do act as soft uh, breach on a lot of things. Like yes, you, you, you can break shields with them. You can do a lot of stuff. So it's not exactly the same as Ophia, but until you find a better place for Bolo, may as well put him on something as powerful as Ace. All right, well, you look at the lineup being brought for both teams. The matchup that TSM just played against Attackers Liquid, which once again, bomb. spoilers, TSM came out ahead on. 
Liquid have already clinched their spot, by the way, in the playoffs. So for them, there's not a ton that they're going to be playing for. Seating. For, for TSM, there's bragging rights, there's pride, there's third place in the group. And, and the potential to play spoiler mm. to Team Empire. Which is substantial. Um, Team Empire, I feel as though if Team Empire are allowed to make it to the playoffs, they will have a better run than what we saw from out of them in the groups. Yeah. Uh, that's going to enable them. They are good in those best of threes, especially. That's worth talking about. So it'll be a very different story if Empire makes it all the way there. And uh, they do have another match also against Invictus Gaming. So that's gonna be an important one for them later in making that spot happen. But Dan's gonna get the lead off here. The first round of Consulate, down goes Bola. Yeah. Empire's fate is very firmly in their hands, playing both TSM and Invictus. All they need to do is just win. Mm -hmm. That's it, that's all it's gonna take. Just win, Parker. Just win, it's really quite that simple. TSM angling for their second win here, as we talked about before. Joystick down below. This is an angle that we'd seen from him in their Team Liquid matchup. Oh, Dan is going to be very difficult to dislodge behind this desk. It's a tough spot to hold, but when you see the player put there, you know that he knows how to do it. Shepard, the second kill for Empire. TSM unable to answer back so far. They don't actually have anyone on the balcony. They're going to rotate Chala over to that balcony to apply the pressure. You can see him repelling up now. That oh. gone six hit its target or did it get eaten by an ADS? I didn't quite see it. Or potentially used to pop the Aruni gate. A bit confusing. Geo gets the first kill for TSM, and they will need to get a couple more of those. As always, is next in the line of sight for Geo, still playing off of this position with Pojo right next to him. Chala's out on the window for a crossfire being established, and Dan is still holding up inside a projector who could be Chala's intended target. But Dan's Ooh. been so accurate with his shots, they almost managed <gasps> to take him down, but Chala does get him. Pojo toiling, twisting, and turning by the long desk. He'll back away and watch over towards left. yellow. He trades the off Chala. Geo falls, so Pojo will need to clutch out. Not a ton of time left to do it with. He knows that there's one down below, and he'll make a ton of noise. Might as well be a herd of elephants. He gets finished off by always, and Empire open things up with a round victory. Very big round there for Empire, and you can see that they are hyped up. He got a little bit loud at the end of that one. They need these rounds to go their way. They need this map to go their way, and they could still have that chance. So, big win. Um, TSM, really standard execution from admin office, but that's what you come to expect on consulate. Honestly, there's not a lot of fluctuation in the executions here. Um, one big problem there for TSM is that the slow nature of their rotations. We did see somebody get to the balcony on TSM side, but way too late in the round for it to truly matter. They did also kill the player in projector on Empire side. I believe that was Dan, but again, a little, little late on that. Uh, and those early picks that we saw from Defending Empire, they went a long way at blunting attacker. the momentum that the attack was trying to build. Downstairs, Empire will go the second crowd at defense. For those that are eagle-eyed fans of Rainbow Six, do know that, well, Empire's last match that they played prior to this one was also on console. And we actually casted that one, Michael. Yes, we... Uh, You've been on a lot of consulate lately, Parker. Yes, we have. We've been on a tear, and it was Team Liquid versus Empire. Liquid ended up coming out on top, required all 12 rounds. It was a 7-5 score for Team Liquid. Empire, when they went on to defense, went with this exact same Five rotation. They started upstairs on console office. Then they went to garage and lobby when needed. Attackers they did not play Teller's archives bomb. at all. Also keep in mind, though, Empire had banned out Pulse. That's in fact the only difference in the operator bans at the moment. It was TSM banning Echo, and that's the small change, which is obviously a targeted ban towards Team Empire. Yeah, and I like the Echo ban. We've been seeing Echo be uh, used fairly well on Consulate in general. Um, even if Empire doesn't want to run it, it's just better to be uh, to say, hey, you know what? We don't want to deal with Echo, regardless of who we're playing. Oh, Joystick will have just hacked a drone. I think it's been shot. They know that there is a roamer upstairs, I would imagine, that the information has been gathered by TSM, but they're very slow to collapse on that. Oh, thrown in a position to call out, and there's the jackal track on Joystick. He is now stuck in the closet and possibly going to be cut off from those players on Repel, but he's doing a good job at least of wasting time and killing drones. He's going to still play inside a cubby, and there goes the grenade. He expertly baits it out. Doesn't have to worry too much about a follow-up for now. Achieved still has one in his pocket, and there it goes, but Joystick doesn't take any damage. Achieved might not be aware of that. 
gunfire going through, and the hatch opened up so oh. conveniently by that grenade, and now mm. Joystick has an escape route out of the cubby and towards safety. Now you know where not to nade if you're trying to collapse the player. Look at this though, Scyther, oh. he will be collapsed upon. And there's another by Yellow, that's Joystick trying to support his teammate. The AK-12 in the hands of Bolo, a fearsome weapon. If only he had the Bolo charm equipped, Michael. Think about what he could have done with that. If only, yeah, I probably would have landed both of those headshots, actually. Yeah, in fact, just a little bit better mm -hmm. than he already was. Plus 5% to aim, I hear. That's what I heard as well. Now, Hojoman on repel, trying to cut off the rotation through mezzanine. This is not an easy position to hold, but Achieve is the one to get the next kill, and you know, TSM are starting to run away with this round. It's all on always. Shepard. When Electric Claw goes from below, Nitro Cell for Shepard will be intended for Achieve. He puts it away. Not the time to use it, I suppose. Now he'll toss it up, but he misses an opportunity, and Achieve manages to get away so luckily. Oh, man. Poor timing on Shepard's part for that one. You gotta feel bad for Shepard with moments like that. It really. Not a lot he could have done better there other than keep his gun up, but he didn't know. How could he have? So open goes panel one. And most of panel two. A bomb has Got that located. garage nice and wide. TSM will be ready to execute when the time comes. But speaking of time, only 30 seconds left. Holding this tight angle, Pojo sees the barrel of the Alda, by the way. He knows that somebody's still there. So grenade goes out. Frag grenade out. Oh. And it downs always, and he can capitalize off of this, knowing that he's got the down finished off. Nicely played by Pojo, man. Shepard is the only one to stop a flawless round from TSM right now as the diffuser is being planted. Marks come in, so he has a tell. We haven't seen a flawless in a while. It seems like in the midst of this desperation, they can stop it, and Shepard will do just that. Crosses through and takes out Geo. Now he's got the diffuser, only 35 seconds ahead of him. Not, touch, not a ton that he can do. No. And... Buried inside a cafeteria. There it is. Finished off by Chala. So he did deny the flawless. That is valuable for the statistics, I suppose. You can throw a little bit of uh, a little bit of a wrench in your enemy's plans, but really, that two-piece at the beginning of the round by Bolo, it's much the same as the last round, but now it's TSM getting those two early kills that were unanswered, uh, whereas in the first round, Empire did. Uh, well done to Bolo. Well done to his teammates for droning him in there. Curious to see, uh, you know, I get that uh, Joystick wanted to support his teammate, but re-engaging on yellow there, that's very dangerous considering how far up TSM was. Obviously, I, at this, you know, we can say hindsight's 2020, and he probably didn't know, but still a risk taken and a move punished by TSM. At that point, it was pretty easy to convert it to a side hit. Absolutely. Yeah. One by one, the players off-site got dwindled down in numbers. And then, protect your bombs from once this garage panels batters. get opened up and you have to risk a nitro cell, you rely on your teammates to cover you when you push forward with that nitro in hand. Obviously not the case when everybody's dead. So, yeah. by what can you do? Die, well, I guess. I don't know, Nihilus Parker's back. He died. He's returned. We'll all die. <laughs> oh, slowly, Life slowly is, fading away. Life is fleeting. <laughs> actions futile. He's not always like this, chat. Sometimes he's. And I'm back. Hey, welcome back, Parker. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. Yeah, I missed you. Ten seconds left. You, so, we've got Empire defending the bottom floor Five once again. Looks like they're going to also be investing in that top round. They seem to be under the impression that they know what mistakes they made last round, and they know they can correct them in this one. Let's see if they're right. More spawn being played out here by Scyther. Something that both Team Liquid and Empire had done in their matchup here on console, and TSM was doing it against Team Liquid and vice versa in the matchup earlier today. So. Teams playing off of the sheer amount of windows and angles that when you approach consulate, you need to be cognizant of. Well, it's difficult on this map. The windows play such a large part for both teams. Um, and Geo, actually, you can see he's, he's pretty far out there because he's worried about the pressure from those open windows. TSM has gotten control of Admin, and they're pushing that forward to Top Spiral, Projector. So you can see it's all being droned out right now. Very strategic, very structured for TSM. They do expect to see roamers on the other side of the top floor, usually by CEO in yellow, and that's exactly what we have here for Empire. Oh, Bolo trying to recreate what he did in the previous round by taking out two separate members of Empire so early on, but the gunfight does not go in his direction. He loses some HP, goes to utility work, and then we take a look at what Empire is doing as they head for the hills. They've been pushed off of that third and second floor, as had been discussed before in the previous round, and now Dan waits patiently. Everybody but him have gone back to that bomb site. 
and he's just going to be inside the bathroom. SMG 11 in hand. Highest DPS gun in the game right next to the Boz G, which doesn't really count. It's a double barrel slug shotgun, so we're just going to ignore that. Bolo opening up above, trying to put pressure on that player inside of the bathroom. They probably know that he's there. And yeah, it's based on their play right now, they certainly do, and they're trying to poke some holes in that little bunker. Eventually, Dan will fall back through the drop, and there he, he just did it, just now. TSM might not be aware of that, but they have full top and middle floor control. One minute left, they'll open up some of that wall with the Selma toss out by Polo. The clue line of sight down below. Dan wants to contest that shot. Mm. They'll fight for a challenge up in that angle, holding true. The ceiling just next to him, being destroyed by the sledge of Achieved, smashing his way forward. There goes the breach. So 40 seconds, and Geo has used his hard destruction to open it up. There's still a panel that remains. As for the location of the Empire players, TSM will have to go back onto Drone to try to figure this one out. Dan, he was good in that first round. In the third round, he gets the opening pick onto Bolo, burying him on Yellow Stairs. From above, Pojo Man waiting, droning it out. There's nobody playing by White Van right now. The name gets dropped, it goes off, it does not hit the target it wants to, and Geo's gonna die because of the Banshee that he can't shoot away at. He slowed in the smoke, and that's a capitalization for Empire. Scyther swings on the Chala, though, dies, and it's another smoke kill coming in. Shepard doing excellent work, and he'll look for one more. He and Dan both have two kills apiece, the Chief from above isn't gonna give them a fifth, and Empire takes their second round. Wow, what excellent smoke play there from Shepard, really locking out the enemy. He gets the first pick on a Geo. I really do think that the Geo kill was avoidable. Um, <laughs> he walked into the smoke from outside the breach. Um, the uh, smoke on yellow, though, Chala had no way of getting out of that. So well done to Shepard uh, and Empire as a whole. Great hold there. The biggest difference between that round defending the bottom floor and the previous one is pretty obvious. They didn't lose two players off site. So, speculated that Empire knew what mistakes they made the last time they defended that site. They absolutely did. Those yeah. two deaths early? Well, let's just play hard anchor. Defenders let's not give them a chance to get those picks. They did technically roam, but they roamed in such a way where they were not in any way going to try and confront their opponent. They knew they could win it on the clock, and they did. So Empire learning from their mistakes on that garage hold. We talked about the site rotation that Empire likes on this map. They will not go to Teller's archives unless absolutely required to do so, which yep. thanks to the way that the three site rotation works, they're never gonna be absolutely required to do it. Let's not kid ourselves here. So for Empire, they go back upstairs to console office. They've got lobby in their back pocket if they require it. And with the way that Empire has been learning from their mistakes and the fact that console office went in Empire's favor all the way back in round number one, Lobby seems likely. Yeah. So the question is, will TSM learn from their mistakes? They've lost this site before. Can they take it now? Looks like they're setting up for yet another admin take that is obvious from their spawns. On Empire's side, let's see. They do have reinforced wall by the stairs, but they're not confronting the admin push much. As you can see from their positioning. Potentially a C4 from below. TSM will need to deal with that. Probably going to send Chala downstairs, I imagine, since he's playing on that zero. You could put some of those cams down there, and then you don't actually have to play a player down the stairs. Chala does have a drone in there right now, so he'll put another one. Yeah, he's. you can see what his job is quite clearly. It's the flank watch. Now, TSM, um, re finally going for repel as they drone out a uh, small office and cafeteria, printer, they establish that's all clear. They can start focusing their efforts on the site. It's gonna be the same point of entry for Bolo above. Chal on that zero operator, as you had mentioned. How more Jackal, the experiment is over. Empire's aggressiveness had come back to bite them in that second round, but since then it seems to be doing all right. Scyther looked like he was going to try to replicate round number two, but who knows exactly what his thoughts were. Drone's being shot away at by Dan. Again, very difficult role for Dan to try and stay alive in Projector. If you're exposed there, but Dan is one of those players that can make it work and has done in the past. C4 from Joystick. Ooh, the timing is everything here. Oh, Pojaman just walks past it, I believe. And I don't know if it's still there, but I, I'm guessing it is, and the call is just being not made. It could be a two-piece if he triggers right now. And he doesn't. 
Hojo Man is still, I believe, exposed to that one. I mean, it's all going to come down to the timing of when he decides to trigger it. Um, and that's up to Joystick. So far, we've also seen the uh, Selmas going up on the wall. Getting away at those flank drones there for Joystick. Trying to limit the information for TSM. Yeah. Whether the Nitro Cell is there or not, Bolo stands over top of it. There were some issues with the Selma on the wall in the projector. Dan goes down. There has been a dedicated Defender, effort from Pojo to try and deal with that, but it's just the one credited with it. This run out from Joystick also gives his position away, so the call from TSM is that there's three people in there, and there goes a Nitro Cell from Scyther, used so effectively. In the midst of the smoke is Pojo. No! They keep going down to these toxic canisters. They cannot be committing those mistakes time and time again. The good news for TSM is that here at 3v3, Bolo almost missing his shots, but he lands it and always pops up and refrags onto his teammate, getting him, avenging him on his behalf. Chalin achieved versus always in Shepard. That's what it stands at at the moment. And there goes the Aruni gate, Chalin not wanting to give away his position nor any particular HP, but that entire punch hole setup from Shepard will be his undoing. Empire looking to extend their lead now, and they'll do just that with Shepard being the superstar performer. That's 3-1 for Empire. Shepard's play on Smoke is some of the best in the world, and he's putting up a master class right now. Um, full control with those gas canisters. Great positioning, using his weaponry to the best of his ability. Using that shotgun in close range, the SMG-11 uh, SMG at medium to long range when he has the opportunity. And uh, you just have to be thoroughly impressed by Shepard's Smoke play through these four rounds. Now going into this, the fifth round, He's actually going to switch over to the Maestro. And hey, you know what? Do what you want to do. We know Shepard's going to lock it down as the anchor no matter what role he's on. So Empire find themselves up 3-1. to one. That top floor, Defenders not something that TSM is comfortable attacking, attackers. clearly. The bottom floor, TSM managed it one time, but Empire were able to read the attack strategy and adjust for it. Now we go to, as you Bob predicted, we discussed, that middle floor for Empire. We'll see how they manage here. If you want to support TSM, you want to talk about it? Well, I figured you would pick it up because I like I so I dropped it right as it was up, so I just figured the, I gestured to it. But I mean, yeah, I but pointed, I do them. I, I the screen. I do them so much more than you, ladies and gentlemen. Would you like to look as fly as TSM does? Because I don't know if that's possible. Is that possible? Well, I want to throw. look as fly as TSM. Well, now you've written the throne. <laughs> Attackers are moving to defuse a bomb. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> if you would like to look as fly as TSM. You're welcome to do so. You can support them by purchasing their skin in the game, the Rainbow Six Share skin. The portion of the proceeds go back to the team. There you go. Thank you. And live to run. Promise. Promise. I can't get over the fans, man. I can't. <laughs> You've had see four it. matches of just <laughs> staring at the fans. <laughs> we can't, we just, can't get away from Consulate. You don't know what it does to a man. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get away from Consulate, and we can't get away from the fans. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. And that's why we're making sure everyone knows. So, uh, Empire, trying to make sure everyone knows that they are the dominant Consulate team, as they have been looking really good on this defensive half. Um, the one round for TSM, off those two kills, I would say that gives a little bit of hope for TSM and their fans. But again, the, the, the swiftness at which Empire adjusted to their mistakes in the, in the next round is, is just so impressive, and that makes me worry if, I, worry if I'm a TSM fan. Empire are also fighting for their lives, Michael, so yeah, there's way a important. huge amount of just weight on their shoulders. And the one thing that we can say about Empire is that they don't really buckle to the pressure the way a lot of other no. teams do. Yeah, they are they're really good at maintaining their closure. It's lobby defense now for Empires. We're halfway through this fifth round. One more defense for Empire remains after that. So Empire have noticed that their hold upstairs is something that TSM is struggling to deal with, and so they're repeating it here for their top floor defense. Sometimes the Romers would fall back, but I think Empire realizes that this is actually going to be a solid hold. Well, Dan drops at the right amount of time and still has the ability to fight through those openings that have been created in the floor. Joystick, the first to be punished as Geo opens things up. A 5v4 for TSM awaits the final minute of action. With Dan sitting down below, still watching this angle, that we know there's somebody out on the balcony. Does he, though? That's the real question. If he doesn't, well, he's going to fall off. A beautiful shot on the Jala. And down he goes, but he's traded off immediately by Pojo from above. He has his teammates back. 
the Avenge comes in. Shepard could be the next one. All done hand. And that maintains TSM's advantage, and now going to the dying seconds, all they need to be able to do is get that diffuser down. Easier said than done, though, as they only just now open the front door. The Chief knows there's somebody playing behind that deployable shield, and the smoke goes out. These have been particularly deadly against TSM. Where are the ADSs? That'll be the real question. We know there was two upstairs. They'll need to take care of that deployable shield that Scyther is playing behind. Pojo Man fighting Shadows. He's with Geo as they are now inside of the site. Geo will attempt the plant. You need full coverage from TSM, and the good news is that you've got the numbers advantage. Always punished for it. Pojo standing sentinel over top, and the diffuser goes down. Scyther sneaking up from the back, but there's too many angles to watch. And TSM bounce back as they close the gap between them and Empire. Big round there for TSM, and I love the way they executed it. It seemed as though they were going to try and take their top floor clear and turn that into a front door hit. That's predictable, that's standard, and it would have caused problems for TSM because Shepard was sti uh, still up with that Alda, and there was still the smoke as well available for Empire. I believe Scyther was on it. So there was plenty of denial that could have come out for that front door, but TSM, they focused their efforts on Spiral Statue area, and that allows them to get a deep sight plant through adequate coverage from Pojo Man. Well done, reading the situation correctly. And even though that came to the very, very last minute of the round, or last uh, seconds of the round, I guess, um, TSM still managed to get that plane down. Many bombs as they can. Now we go to the bottom floor. This is a 1-1 site, so each team has won here one time on this first half. And this will be the deciding round for whether or not TSM can get an even split out of the first half, or if Empire come up with the advantage. I have to say, considering the stakes involved here, Parker, I am thoroughly impressed by TSM's play. Yes. And uh, if I'm Empire, even though I'm up one round, I'm, I would be very worried. I do agree with that. I mean, we'll see exactly what happens with the side swap. If we just, we scoot on over to yesterday's match against Team Liquid. Empire took three rounds on defense and then only two rounds on attack. In fact, they struggled really hard to find their footing against Liquid on attack. Now, Liquid and TSM at this current event are not the same team. Yeah. But this map still plays out quite in a linear fashion. And if Empire are as slow as we saw yesterday against Liquid, TSM are capable of punishing them in the same way. Yeah, and it really is a case of, and I discussed it when we were casting that match yesterday, um, it really is a case of just on defense. If your enemy is attacking slow on this map, and be slow. Yeah. <laughs> Wait out the time. We've seen Empire utilize that on defense already. Oh, absolutely. Defender but achieved? Exposed. That's not what you want. Are we no, going to get no. more from Joystick? Geo, how do you miss those shots? What? You have a clear line of sight onto him. My, that is a heartbreaker for TSM on a round that they desperately needed to win. I mean, he must have been hitting the railing, Parker, but that's still, that's still pretty embarrassing considering, oh, wow, a double pass there. It's still pretty embarrassing considering he essentially had like full visual um, and he knew exactly where his opponent was. Joystick, I mean, really impressed by his ability to use that uh, that run out to great effect. Yeah. Well, you can take a, take chances, take advantage of your opponents if you think that that's something that works out. And if you're Empire, you, get, you play fast and loose. You get under the skins of TSM, get in their head. This is a TSM a team that is obviously playing for third place, but the expectations on them are significantly lesser than what you see on Empire. So yep. for Empire, you want to stay in it. And confidence, like what you saw in a joystick, is huge mentally to move forward on. Many teams in Empire's position uh, would buckle under the pressure. Um, and the fact that Empire is maintaining their confidence, as you just mentioned, mm -hmm. is super important. And it just it's just typical Empire. I think we mentioned that earlier. And they're really good at persevering when the pressure is hot. Absolutely. Ice in their veins. We say they're, they're as cool as a Russian winter, I think we've said before. Pojo, man, just falls and falls. Picks up the diffuser immediately. That's a tough spot to be in. Yeah, this looks like a 4-2 half if I've ever seen one, but let's see what Bolo and Chala can do. They've got 45 seconds to work with. That's plenty of time. Great guns, full HP, maybe a few 1v1s here and there, and we see ourselves in a 2 versus 3 that's much more winnable for the attack. Who knows? There goes the hatch dropping in, not to the back of the site, but over towards server. 
So TSM have that available for them if they want to. And if they decide that's the option, they say, yes, let's do that. Chala will go down, but there is a barricaded door that will slow him down. And because of that, they now know he's ever closer to getting on in. Another toxic canister goes off. Shepard has been especially deadly with those so far today. Bolo finds the first kill for TSM. He needs some more than that, and Chala does rather. Chala's still there, but Joystick has the flank. He's perfectly prepared for it. That's a 4K for him to seal the deal and very coincidentally give his team the fourth round of the first half. Taking a solid 4-2 half there for Empire is great on Consulate, which is, as we mentioned earlier, a very balanced map by early army yesterday. I don't think we actually talked about that today. So, Joystick with that run out um, and getting that two-piece and getting back into the building to then get a 4K, I mean... Yeah, good job, Joystick, but also, what? For TSM? Ah, that's... that's rough. Um, yeah. Okay. So with that, TSM, they now have to recover in the second half, but we talked about this. There's every chance that Empire's attacks on this map will be less than ideal. And uh, I mean, we've seen that for them already on this map, so I wouldn't be surprised. And if that repeats here today, if they are too slow on the attack, and if that causes problems for them, then well, we might see ourselves in a much closer match than what the scoreline currently suggests. Yes, absolutely. So, Attackers what becomes of this second of half? Neither team has taken their tactical time out just yet, so you can still take a pause and discuss amongst yourselves and see what exactly it is that you can improve upon. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I, don't, I don't suspect that TSM will do that, frankly. I do think Attackers that if Empire starts losing here, they will. Uh, they need to consider all options. I think uh, TSM's opting for a fast and loose type strategy right now, though. Yeah, this is exactly what they did with Liquid. Yeah. Now, they've got, uh, I believe this is a bottom floor defense. Yes, indeed. Empire very focused on the uh, bottom floor. They're trying to clear out those uh, Electro Claws from Kaid. There you go. That's actually a two for one. They get, but oh no, there was only one on the wall. It's a juggling from Geo. Let's see if he gets it. It's going to be close. And yes, right at the end, Geo saves the wall. And he's going to go in to pick up his electric cost so he can continue to juggle as the second nade comes in. Oh, but it looks like he threw the electric claw too early. That is rough by just a second. The nade will get that electric claw and the wall will open. Unlucky timing. In goes the clone of Yana, gets shot away at. It. As you saw that Shamika launcher being put in from Chala, who's now down and dead. Dan walks right in, and that is a triumphant entrance. He's looking for more, but Geo says no thank you. Always is there as Empire just bursts into the site. All of a sudden, they have a huge and sizable advantage. They've still got four bodies up, and Shepard will do what needs to be done to get that diffuser planted. As the gunfire rains through the floor, Achieve will now try to outduel Scyther. He does a successful job of that, but the diffuser gets planted nonetheless. Bolo, what are you going to be able to do? Nothing. Shepard says good night. Take care. Achieve now in a 1v3 from above. He knows how dire this could be. Empire putting in an absolute clinic on this very first round and will prompt Achieve to go somewhere entirely different than we were originally expecting. All the while, the time is continuing to waste down, and there's almost no chance he's going to be able to make it there. Seven seconds is how long it takes to get to the diffuser, or to get the disable off, and we're already at the 12 second mark. Yeah, I think it's physically impossible at this point. My whole challenge with Shepard and Round over, well done to Empire there. Great call to just hit site direct. There were too many roamers for TSM and they are punished for that fact. That happens a lot on the mm -hmm. bottom floor. Absolutely does. Yeah, where the defense, they want to slow the attack down. So they're on the top floor, they're on the middle floor. Uh, the wall gets opened up and one pick on the, uh, on the anchors. And that's all you need for the attack in those scenarios. Empire read that perfectly. And I stand corrected, Parker. Tactical timeout for TSM. You said that they weren't going to do it. I did you say. Said it. You know what? I did say that. And you know what, Walls? That was wrong. I wear my shame. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, TSM going to consider what they can do here. Uh, they are being thoroughly walloped at this point, five two, and they lose their first defense, so that does not bode well for them. It would have been really easy for TSM to walk in today, Michael, and look at the day and go, you know what? We're already 0-4, we packed our bags, mm. and we're going home. Yeah. Let's just have some fun. But, but they wanted to be competitive in these matches. Yeah. 
So, uh, honestly, like, big ups to them for, for coming in and not giving up. And, I mean, there's a lot to be said and a lot of ink that can be spilt about whether a team is, at its heart, still so competitive, wants to come in and not necessarily try as hard as they need to. I mean, there's there's a lot of discussion that's going to be had, I'm sure, in the community about that. But I will be honest, I, I do... It all comes back to Merc. It all comes back to the lack of that crucial player in the TSM lineup. Yep. And and the fact that the roles just don't work the same way with Pojo filling for Merc. If it, if, if it were Geo that weren't able to make it, which that would be a shame as well. But but Pojo would slot into that role much easier. He would fit right in. In fact, they looked great when Pojo was on that role. That was actually the season of the NA League. I would argue that when Gio was uh, out and Pojo was filling, that was some of the best siege we'd ever seen from TSM. And I don't know that there's a there's a causation there, um, but they were playing very well at that time. Attacker's objective is to well, the bomb. match could be on the line here if TSM doesn't right the ship. They call that timeout. Bolo will go back for a spawn peak. If he dies early on, that's tough for TSM. They like this lineup that they brought last time around, so why not? Let's go for it yet again. Achieved with the C4, and it goes on the window. I think he detonates it, and nothing happens. So he'll walk away with no C4. Ready to run out on the balcony. Could potentially make a play on Empire, who looked to want to full clear this time. So instead of the direct sight hit, Empire is going at the slow road. All is being made is... Achieved looks for an avenue back to the bomb site if required. This is a downstairs hold yet again for the second round in a row. TSM liked something that they saw on the first crack at Garage. They're going to do it again. Oh. But Achieved's not going to like this one. Dan Ever elusive, punishing Achieved. First kill comes very early in this round, and it comes in favor of Empire. Ooh, Polo, difficult challenge here. He has the drop open, so he can't retreat. He's going to try, I'm guessing, to get another pick, uh, this time for his team before he falls back, but no, he'll just drop. Interesting call for TSM to drop when they're at the man disadvantage. And there's they're not wasting too much time right now. So, it's dangerous. Here goes the hatch and Bolo will be brought on down, thanks to none other than Chala with that destruction work that comes with the LMG. Pojo Man remains the, lane, the lone body right now sitting by lobby and playing still upstairs. Bolo going for a full flank. Now he's over down below Visa, where Joystick currently lords over top of. And Bolo's just going to wait very patiently to see if any of those drops open up and if he can collect a kill off of them. After that very first pick, not much has happened. Pojo does get droned out. And in bathroom, he's not going to make it anywhere in a hurry except for dead. <laughs> no, Geo, what on earth? You can't be doing that. Chala will now just look at the Bomb smoldering carcass of a round. An ace clutch will be needed for him. Oh, but he's playing this one perfectly. Oh. There's opportunities for another. And there it is, but his position has been given away inside of security. Oh, oh. and he just needs one more. Are we about to see it? An ace clutch lined up, but no. So close, and Scyther shuts him down. You know Chala was feeling it, and he played it almost perfectly. But Empire moved to match point. Parker, I am so frustrated by that. And for Chala, he just barely <laughs> avoided making history. He almost made... That would have been one of the most incredible clutches we'd ever seen at a S-tier event in Siege. That would... Wow. So close. Very NT. Extremely NT. Slightly better gun than I think he would have had it. Now, you got to keep in mind that the DPS on that LMG is in the floor. Yes. It's it's quite tiny. low. It's really impressive. It's quite, quite low, yes. The only advantage he had there was the ammunition, which he used to great effect. But yeah. Wow, what a try. Empire on match point now. Defenders protect One away from getting those points, those three points that they really desperately want in order to potentially qualify for the playoffs. TSM doing their darndest to deny it. What a heartbreaking result for Chala. I, I know, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. <laughs> he got so close. Unbelievable. 50 HP. No. <laughs> Just absolutely unbelievable play. Yeah, I... He, he went John John Wick for a moment there. He just was like <laughs> pivoting from left to right to front to center to back and up and down and just killing everything in his path. Chala is an absolute terminator. But it uh, wasn't enough.
Yeah. You gotta imagine one kill from any of his teammates earlier in the round. And we're looking at a completely different scenario. Oh, well. oh boy. Everyone feels bad collectively for him, even Empire. They to were, be fair, Empire did push him one by one by one by one by one. To be, okay, yeah, of yes, course, of did. course. They but, did. But, but, but he also pushed them. So he forced those 1v1s in some True. instances. I would, I would say that was on that was on Chala. I mean, even we saw, I think it was Joystick dropped an NT in the chat. Insane. Yeah, insane. Yeah. So, TSM now, uh, the only thing they have really going for them are two rounds, which... Which are, you know, rounds that Empire could have also won, frankly, thinking back. And uh, an almost clutch from Chala. And apart from that, Empire have looked like the absolutely dominant team in this matchup. I think it's kind of funny that when you sledgehammer that, it doesn't immediately break the cam. I think there's a way that you can make it do that. Like, like it depends on where. But yeah. I, I don't know. I've never tested that. But it is funny, yeah. You would think it would. Always. You'd think so. Yeah. So the last stand for TSM. Are we about to see the final round that this team is going to play here in Mexico? They won the previous matchup against Liquid, but that seems to be about it as Empire has them right now on the Razor's Edge. Mm, that'd be a great place to land an Ash Charge. And I think Dan is aware of the potential there, but he does not use it yet. Possibly waiting for his teammates to set up for the execute on that top floor. This is a middle floor defense, but you need to clear the rocks out above. And there's that Ash Charge. So yes, he was waiting a little bit just for the appropriate time. It doesn't get the ADS, it doesn't get the shield, and it doesn't do any damage to achieve. So ultimately not as successful as they want it to be. The magnets that were giving Chala some extra staying power inside a projector are now long gone. And he'll have to get out of there, as you can still hear the telltale sounds of that G36C on the balcony, as that's where Dan is posted up. This is a slow round from Empire. They realize what's on the line here. They don't need to rush it. Oh, downstairs, Chala will fight Joystick and win it out. Top performer for his team. It's, he's giving them what they need. As Scyther also goes down at top piece of stairs, likely to achieved. Achieved has the angle here. I don't know if Scyther is retrievable. And with only 30 seconds left, the priority for Empire might be to look elsewhere than to try and get Yana back up on her feet. Hojo Man taken out by Always, so it is technically a 4v4, despite the fact that Scyther is immobile and can't really do anything. Dan's still on this balcony, gets challenged by Bolo. That's not a fight that Bolo usually loses, but he does anyway. Chala securing onto Scyther, so a 3v3. 10 seconds remaining. Oh, always gets caught as he vaults on out. Geo, a big double piece, and that's Diffuser down as well. Dan is miles away, so there's no chance he's going to be able to get in. Impactless frags are all he can accumulate, and he'll get one before Achieved shuts the door on a potential comeback. TSM pick up round number three, and they stay alive. Well played there to Geo on the Jaeger. Right time, right place, and he's not missing his shots. So TSM, they are going for it, and that tactical timeout works very well for them here. Well, they managed to turn things around. They're going to go back to the fabled garage bomb site where Chala almost clutched on before. Mm. That was about the closest they've come to a successful hold. This will be their third attempt on this bomb site, right now being 0-2. They have changed some things up, though, and I don't know if Bola will be six-picking. Yes, he does. They had baited out the pulse. Why? To make Empire think that it was a Teller's Archives defense. Mm -hmm. In this case, Wamai comes in. Far more pivotal on a map or on a site like Garage on this map. I don't know if they're going to fall for that, because usually when you bring the pulse, you six-pick into it if you actually are going Archives Tellers. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe they will. Empire did six-pick uh, their Yana into a Zofia, for whatever that means. I mean, they feel very similar roles. Yes, they do. So, Empire, probably going to figure out what they're dealing with pretty early on here. Chala once again on the Tachanka. Thank the Lord for that. And by Lord, I mean Tachanka. Lord Tachanka. Mm -hmm. You want to thank Lord Tachanka? I am thanking Lord Tachanka. And I just did. Five Five first jokes are so played out. Yeah, but... What are you going to do? I don't know. Are you going to... Are you going to... File a, a complaint? Yes. Mm. This is really bugging you, isn't it? Anyway, a potential final round again. We'll continue to say this as we move forward. Is this the last round that we're going to see from TSM? Oh, 
I like that setup there from Bolo inside of the bathroom. Uh, they're much more dedicated to the bathroom hold. Looks like Empire's going to prioritize opening up the garage, and it'll work. There you go. Panel two and three open up. And it'll be a good avenue for the, uh, the attack to hit the site. But they still haven't cleared out the roamers. I I'm curious if, if they're even trying. Let's take a look at the top floor, see if there is dedicated roam clear. It looks like the answer is new. Either that or it's just really far behind. No, no, no. Joystick. There you go. Projector. And he is actually kind of solo roam clearing right now. He's got teammates droning for him, and he is also playing Jackal, so he can scan the footprints. But um, still, a slower roam clear because he's alone. The top floor control is theirs, and now you clear out the main floor. Three floors here on console where all the action from TSM will likely occur down below. They don't want to invest too much off-site in case they sacrifice an early pick. So much more restrained, much more conservative defense. The only player that could potentially make some damage done on, done on this first floor is Bolo. He's got the hatch opened up to his left, and he can drop whenever he wants. I don't know if he's been droned out just yet. He might be sitting on some mute jammers, but given the fact that while well, there's tons of reinforcements, they have to suspect that somebody's up there. Looks like some debris might actually be stopping them from seeing Geo down below as they're trying to get the wall going open. Ooh, Bolo's opening up above that wall, actually, so he can impact Trick should they actually put an exothermic on the wall. So that'll be good for him if that's what they decide to do. But look at this soft wall on the far bathroom side, and uh, now Bolo's got to fight a totally different angle. Unless Bolo wants to drop, and that might be the case here. Bolo picks up Joystick. Shepard goes down, or Geo goes down to Shepard. Bolo's just still playing off of the same spot. Pistol out. A third lined up for him. Swings around, but he times it incorrectly. The duel will continue to go down through those slats. Bolo will be able to see. There's plenty of time to reload. But he's been able to narrow down the numbers for Empire, and they're now the ones who trail. Bolo still playing behind the shield. Dan looking to collect, but nobody can. Bolo putting in work. A fourth kill for him, maybe. And I don't know if you can hear us, but everything has just crashed. All right, thank you so much, everybody, for your enduring patience and the interests of full transparency. The hotel suffered a very brief power outage for roughly a second or two. Now, some of the setup is on generators, the PCs, the back of the stage, etc. so they didn't go down. But the server and a lot of other stuff is not connected to those generators, and they went down. So with that said, we are now back in action. It just took a little bit for us to get everything back up and running. Additionally, the admins deliberated over that final round, and if you recall, it ended on the freeze frame of Bolo peeking around a deployable shield in the bathroom on the first floor of Consulate. Well, the determination is that TSM would have won the round with about 30 seconds remaining. Bolo would have received the last kill in bathroom, and the defensive setup was in such a way that Empire would not have been able to overcome that with what little time was remaining, and as such, the admins have given that 10th round to TSM. Still, though, as you can see on your screen, Empire sit on match point. They desperately need this victory if they want to make it to the, play to the playoffs on Friday. Yes, this is a very important match, and it's definitely a big one for Empire. Pojo Man and Shepard both trying to insist that the server remain up, rightfully so, I hope it does. So, we get into the action here on the middle floor consulate, TSM will be still on defense. Yes. So, that said, this bathroom was the scene of the crime for the previous round. Obviously, yep. uh, it's going to be a very pivotal part of this defensive structure, but for very different reasons. The bathroom's connection to both the bomb sites, effectively acting as a midpoint between both piano and lobby, means that you need to flush that person out because you likely won't have the ability to get the diffuser planted while somebody is playing that spot. Yeah, actually, uh, interesting challenge we saw in that last round. Um, now, I talked to Bolo about it. And uh, what was happening there was Empire were continually challenging him one by one, but they're doing it over the shield. A lot of free aiming over the shield, expecting Bolo to stand up, but Bolo challenged to the right, caught four players off guard in that round. Big round for him. To start this round off, he's going to lose most of his HP as he attempts to peek out of the building. And we will see the first kill oh. fall, in fact, for TSM. Down goes Dan, and oh no, a team kill looks like Something's going on as they continue to team kill each other. 
Uh, it seems there has been a call. I'm not sure that that round actually means anything based on the actions we saw there. Deliberate TKing from Empire. And yes, it has just been confirmed that that round was completely irrelevant. Don't know the details just yet, but uh, ignore what just happened. Yeah, obviously something needs to be redone, so that's why we have now left the lobby and... Well. Oh, they went to the wrong site. So it sounds like... Lobby was locked for TSM. Yeah. Lobby would have been locked as it was won just two sites previously. Now it'll be interesting yeah. to see if, if they award. Did they, did they just redo the round because it was caught early on? I don't Do know. Do they give the round to Empire and therefore well, the match as well? Well, that's tricky, Parker, because part of that falls also on the host for hosting up in a way that Lobby would be open because you can host the Lobby in a way where that's restricted. And partially that also falls on the country of Mexico, where we are located, for and also for the developers who built the game all the way back in Montreal. That requires power to function. And then, of course, it was power was created either by Tesla <laughs> or Edison, depending on who you are. So in all reality, who are we going to blame here, frankly? Right, exactly. Edison? So, I don't think so. I don't know. It's a bit, a bit far back, don't you think? No, but uh, we'll see what exactly comes of that. I suspect it'll it'll be a rehost. I mean, well, it, it definitely will be. Um, the nature of said rehost. Not entirely sure. The nature of the round count, also not entirely sure. But uh, that's yeah, it's not up to us, uh, up to the admins. And I can see them deliberating right now, talking about what they're going to decide. What an anticlimactic finale that would be if they just award the round to Empire <laughs> because of <laughs> improper side choice. <laughs> and they win! Congratulations, Empire! Like, All right, Woo! match is over. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens exactly, but. Uh, yeah, we're just uh, we're just waiting, same as uh, everybody else. I will say they are getting back into the lobby. Right now, the players are filing back into the lobby, so I suspect we're going to pick up where we left off. But yes. uh, it's not up to us. I I imagine that it's just going to be a oopsie, and then yeah, we just go again. Yeah, that's probably probably it. I do appreciate, by the way, in the downtime mm -hmm. that uh, Bartosz decided to uh, Bart, or as we've been calling him, Barry. Or Bartosz, yeah. Bear! I called him Bob earlier, that was fun. Took a dunk on us pointing at the camera, saying that we wouldn't start the game. Mm -hmm. I look terrible in that I don't photo. know why you don't like the photo. I look awful. I think you do fine. I have the weird angle in my face, my hair looks huge. You have a small head. Parker, your hair is huge. You have a, sm you have a slightly smaller than normal head, Parker, and I have I'm a slightly a... larger than normal head. Parker, I am a small a person. Very pronounced. You in put general. us in photos together. It looks like my head could consume your head. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's the noise it makes. Probably. Is it? Yeah. I mean, it's not that big. The hair doesn't help. The hair is very poofy and yes. very curly. I think it's luscious. I like it. It's very soft today. Mm, yeah, it looks soft. They like they tried to put like curls in it. Mm -hmm. They like, straightened it on the first day, and I was just like, I don't know. I think this is my jam. So they they braided my hair yesterday. It's a good look, and you couldn't really see it on camera. No, but I got a picture not. out. That was really cool. I like I loved the braiding. You farmed impressions. It was good. Yeah, lots 2. of impressions. Two point five thousand likes. Impressive stuff. I think it was more than that actually. I, think. I don't remember. You don't but need to flex. Anyway, just go with it. The the hair today also has a braid, but what they did is they put a braid around my ponytail base. Oh, very cool. Right. You can't see that on camera either, but they're like. They're nailing it with the hair today. You sound like, um... I sound like yourself, so actually. You're, that's what I think That's how you snore. Okay, well, that is not how I snore. That's Normal definitely how you do snore. not snore like <gasps> that. But it looks like we're back in the game. Wait, wait a minute. We'll wait for one second here. I was sorry, I was sleeping. I was so bored with your story about the brain. You get to talk about your hair, I get to talk about my hair. That's true, but you could have easily hit me with the snoring as well. Yeah, but I'm a nice person. It's up for debate. Oh, yeah, that's true. We are in the match, by the way, on your screen, you will see what could be the last round. I know that it has been a long wait, and once again, we greatly appreciate your patience. But there is a score to settle, and something needs to be done. Now, make sure that TSM is not going to one of the sites that they are not allowed to go to. And we are picking up, it seems, from where we left off, when the power went out, to just a different site here for TSM, and... We will continue on, continuing on. And they're going to go to Archives Tellers. It'll be given away. The Pulse, as we talked about, was sixth pick bait for one period in time. Yep. In a not-so-distant world. Now there is actually going to be a Pulse on the board, and the Nitro Cells being trotted out by TSM. They are well-equipped. Four explosives in their pockets. Five, technically, if you want to be pedantic, because the impact grenades in Polo's pockets also explosives. So, boom. Everyone, bar everyone brought... 
Boom. Very different utilization of those impacts than you will see from the four oh, nitro cells. Quadrupling up on it. Empire sticking with the tried and true lineup that Jackers we have seen objective. out of them time and time again. They have explosive potential. The Jackal will be particularly irritating to deal with. And especially given that it's Joystick on that operator as he is often on Jackal. Now it's going to be an admin take, you can tell from the spawns. Drone work going in. TSM not contesting admin whatsoever. They do have C4s below. They're probably going to keep most of those in reserve for the actual site play. Geo playing inside of Tellers. He'll look to make that take as difficult as possible for Empire, but what's not difficult is this top floor push. Shepard is just established through his drone, but there's no one up on the east side of the top floor. But he saw, likely, Bolo and Podraman by the Yellow Stairs and CEO. So, Empire aware of what they have to deal with when they get to that position. Oh, this is some good angle play here. You can open up above Freeze Tellers, you can see through that little window, and you can actually... Uh, get some good angles onto the players, potentially into the bottom floor, depending on where the defenders open their holes. Just a tiny window that you can see on down there. Very small. And it doesn't need to be too much, frankly, because all you need is a... Love. Yeah. Well, no, what? No? <laughs> oh, very funny, Michael. <laughs> it took you a second. Oh, uh, Chala and achieved. Ready to see for, for from below. Half the round has tr transpired here for Empire. So they do have the control up top, all the way up top, and they're opening above, but there's so much left to cover in terms of ground, there's a lot to do. It's a pivotal part of the map though, and now they'll pick away at some very common spots, especially over by the hallway and the doors that you'd see down below in blue, the server function of server and tellers. Empire have used about two minutes so far of this round, and Scyther has been the primary focus with his soft destruction above. But nobody from TSM is going to give him an inch. In fact, it looks like, with the exception of Bolo, most of TSM are down below. Oh, this is a very bad play by Geo as he almost falls victim to Scyther, who's going to use a ton of ammunition to tear through that floor. Bolo is still all off on his own. Look at this time, though. Only one, no, two C4s expended. No kills from either, but there's only 45 seconds as well. Oh, Ooh. through the floor. No visual. Down goes achieved. And that's, oh gosh, that's your pulse. That's huge for the final 30 seconds now, and Empire have the advantage that they needed earlier on, assessing what they can do with this. A Nitro Cell should be ready at some point, but are they blind? That's the real question. Shepard getting that Diffuser down, and he will do so successfully. Bolo trying to get back to the site, punished by Dan, and Empire have now a two-man lead. From above, that'll grow to three, as always shuts down Chala, and it seems like TSM's run here at Mexico is effectively over. Pojo gets one on the joystick, but there's four more bodies to find, and they'll find him first. A big victory for Empire as they look to make it out of the groups and into the playoffs on Friday. As for TSM, enjoy the flight home. We've seen them play their very final matchup here in Mexico. It took us a while to get there, Parker, but when we did, it was quite definitive. Empire, no question, they were the clear victors in that, the final round, and they secure those points that they desperately needed yes. to potentially make it to the playoffs. Further, they got it in regulation. That means they get as many points as possible, three. It's exactly what you want if you're Empire. Yeah, absolutely. They trailed Invictus before this matchup, but now they vault ahead, and they are one point in front of the Singaporean team. Invictus obviously will be in action later today, as will Empire. In fact, those two teams will meet against each other in what will be a crucial battle. Invictus will be playing Liquid. Empire's last game will be against Invictus. That is going to be hell for them. Yeah, it's going to be a very important match for Empire. And even then, you know, it's, it's, it's tricky. If they don't win that, then it's no longer in their hands. If uh, they go to the playoffs or not, it means that Invictus has that extra chance with their last match of the day later. So, lots on the line here for Empire moving forward, and just in general, that was a very important match as we've just discussed. Well done to them man managing to get the win. I think throughout the map, there really wasn't a lot of question that they would take that win. No, absolutely. I mean, Empire looked like the stronger team the whole time. TSM with that one matchup against Liquid outside of that, TSM have not looked like themselves here, probably because they aren't, frankly. 
But for Empire, their fate was in their hands this morning. It still remains there, and I'm glad that you mentioned the overtime point because making it to overtime would deprive them of one single point, which could make a difference. With that said, that's it for our second matchup. We've got a desk ready to break that down, so we'll toss over to them. All right, well, Empire gets the job done. They needed that regulation win, as we just heard Intera and Kickstar talking about. So they are going to get the three points, which puts them into second place, which then puts them in a much better position to take out IG later on. And if you would like to see that visually, well, I have that for you, as a matter of fact. We can look at our group standings right now and see that reality is reflected in the words that I just said, where Empire is now in second place. They're going to play IG later. IG's in third place now. TSM is in last place. They're done at this event. Jesse, are you having as much fun watching him stall for time I as really I am? am. <laughs> you did, he's such a great job explaining it. People don't even need the visual That's now. That's very true, yeah. <laughs> don't even need this screen. I, right. I could paint a beautiful picture with my words, but this is more beautiful still for fans of European Siege. And look at this, Team Empire. There you go. Eight points. Yeah. What up now in IG? Still going to come down to who gets the win later on. Within that matchup will be important. IG has a couple of chances to get into the playoffs. Their fate is in their hands right now. They beat Empire, they beat Liquid. Guess what? They're going to be into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, they do have a game in hand against Empire, so that one point difference isn't the biggest deal. But as you mentioned, it's against Liquid, so that's going to be a very difficult but game to try to win. But they could be first place. I mean, if they, if they yeah. regulation beat Empire and they regulation beat Liquid, they will be in first place in this group. So all possibilities remain on the table for teams that can win that are not named TSM. That's kind of nuts. It is, but here's the thing. Invictus have two of the hardest teams to go up against in this group at this point. Like, already Group D is beginning to look, I think, for what a lot of people's predictions looked like before the event began. Obviously, with the whole Merc TSM bit notwithstanding, with both Empire and Liquid now sitting in those power positions, and Invictus having the toughest day of their schedule yet. The fact that they have both of the powerhouse teams in Group D to contend with on the same day that's going to be happening in just a couple of hours from now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there's some things that they can glean. Maybe, if not from the, the Liquid game that happened from earlier, right. they're at least able to take a couple of things from this Empire game and maybe understanding that Consulate played in this exact way that TSM attempted to use against them isn't going to be the play. Yeah, and I will say, I mean, IG, they did struggle against Liquid in their earlier game, but 6-8 against Empire, I mean, they very nearly could have taken that matchup. So I think there's definitely still a lot of hope for the Singaporeans, but as far as this game is concerned, I mean, definitely TSM had their moments. That Bola plane set of bathrooms pretty nice. Shala very nearly <laughs> onto Chanka, making the dream happen. But uh, in the end, I agree with the casters were saying this was a much better game from Empire overall, and they deserve to win this. Yeah, and as we look forward, Liquid didn't play the most competitive game against TSM earlier today, which puts them in more danger than I think they should be right now. <laughs> you know, they had that chance just to lock up the number one seed. TSM came back, prevented that from happening in regulation, and now we're in a position where Team Liquid needs to pull out, you know, another win in this last game. So It's been interesting how Group D has always been Team Liquid shooting to the top, and then they're, like, they're in, cool, no one has to worry about them anymore, but they still have so much impact over whether it's IG or Empire, mm -hmm. and the two of them are still neck and neck. Like, even though, yes, there is the one game difference between the two of them, but yes, only a one point difference, in addition, it's still coming down to whether Liquid, like, they have so much power in the midst of this group, essentially to determine what other team makes it out of Group D, yet they're already qualified for playoffs, and they themselves don't really have to worry about their own standing. So it's just, it's weird how the dynamic has worked out for this group already. Yeah, they won't know how they can manipulate the group until IG and Empire play each other, though, because True. whether mm -hmm. that goes to OT or, or if one of the teams wins in it, regulation will be a very big determining factor in that. Right, Empire could just beat Invictus, and then it's over, right? Yep. That would be it. <laughs> in which case, uh oh, uh -oh. who cares? <laughs> you also notice we're not talking about TSM. That's because I don't want to talk yeah. about TSM. We just won't mention them for the rest of the tournament now. We don't have to anymore. Yep, goodbye. <laughs> You had a good run. Actually, we do have to mention them very briefly as we look at some of these rounds. Um, they will be on the losing end of round four, though. And the reason why we're picking some of these Empire rounds is because we want to see how Empire plays. We haven't had a lot of chance to break down their gameplay. So why, mm -hmm. Jesse, do you like round four? So if we pull it up here, I believe we'll start it on a freeze frame. And we can kind of set the scene here because it's really a, a, a replay that I want to highlight Shepard's play on Smoke. Now, notice Achieved in the bottom left. He's the one that has kind of two duties. He's got to stop Shepard by playing the window up above, but he'd also like to pressure 
Master Scyther from throwing his C4 and killing Geometric. So let's start the replay. We'll play it kind of slow here. Scyther is going to get the initial kill with the C4 and a Geo. A Chief can't stop it because he's prepping a nade for Shepard. Shepard is going to dodge his nade as he's throwing the Toxic Babe. Gets out of the way of the nade, so it only takes about half damage, and then pops the, the Toxic Canister right as Pojo is going to step into the smoke. At the same time, hits him with an SMG 11 bullet to deal enough damage that the smoke can finish him off. That was an insane play by Shepard because he's doing so many different things. Dodging the nade, throwing the Toxic Babe, hitting the shot. And as we keep on going throughout this, uh, this replay, you'll see that he does even more throughout this. I mean, he's going to continue to get these kills. He's going to continue to impact this round for the team. We'll speed it up here, and here's the final 2k. One with the SMG 11, one with the shot. He has achieved just trying to make it happen. Shepard, some fantastic play today on Smoke. And it came down to TSM also being heavily distracted. Obviously, Shepard's play was fantastic, but achieved on that window because he had so many different things to do at the same time, then has to completely shift focus away from what his primary objective was, mm -hmm. which was killing Shepard. What happens? Scyther gets the C4 kill on Geo on the default plan, then immediately rushes to Piano, vaults right out. Achieved has to turn his attention from where he's at on Connector straight to the Piano window. He does find Scyther's kill, but it means that he'll completely lose his track of Shepard and has to get back on his drone. And then by that point, Shepard's able to impact the round exactly like you mentioned, with those final two kills, and there's nothing TSM can do to counter it. Very good. I'm excited to see you guys on the Telestrator for playoffs with oh, plays like that. Too. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get that top-down view and draw out some of those It's been sitting right play. over here I this know. entire time, and I'm so excited to touch <laughs> it finally. <laughs> You've had all this time. You could just walk over and touch it at any point in time. That's true, but I want my first time to be special, Monty. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, oh, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it is special for you in playoffs. <laughs> we've, we've been saving it for playoffs, you know what I mean? Indeed, yeah. The committed teams uh, to this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we also have another play as a as a farewell to TSM. We did get a Tachanka 4K. We it was did. cool. It the was, LM, LMG work was nice, you know. It was almost a Tachanka ace, and this is one of those cases where you don't need to explain what's happening in the midst of a play. You just kind of have to watch it and can kind of figure it out for yourself. It's a 1v5. Shala has the rotate in between both cafeteria and security, and he'll just go back and forth. First skill on joystick's pretty easy. The one on Shepard made us think, oh, maybe he can make something in this play. Wraps around the reinforcement, does find the second one on yellow, and then Empire is not going to funnel, but they are still going to give him easy picks. Shala Shala very oh. nearly takes out Scyther at the very end, but it comes back to who wins the peak advantage, and it's the Ash over the Chanka every time. Chala always seems to find himself in these positions, and usually he clutches it out. The 1v5 ace clutch is a little tough to, to, to achieve, so I'm not, you know, we're not hating on Chala for that play. No, I think of course not. You do criticize TSM for putting him in that spot. I mean, we didn't get on the replay, but there's no way. I believe it was a team kill that forced him into that position. So <laughs> there were some fumbles to get to that point, but uh, I mean, it was, it was nice gunplay from Chala. Yeah, I have really good awareness of uh, where people were getting coming from too, was, mm -hmm. and that was it was fun to watch. And unfortunately, one of the realities of of tax shooters is like, if you don't win the round, it's like you either have to go all the way, or it was kind of pointless to get there. So you get True. that nice highlight, but it, it's just like, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> because now the entire effort of one round rests on your shoulders, and if you don't get it, then it, all that effort was for naught. Right, you might as well have gotten zero kills in terms of the impact it's actually going to have. Because it wouldn't do. Like, yeah, you pad your stats. That's cool, but yeah. at the end of the day, the clip is incomplete. If he had just pre-fired the angle too, like he knew where the guy was coming from, but he just didn't hold that down. That makes me long. wonder. Like he, that thing takes so long to reload, so I wonder if he knew that he didn't have that many bullets left, so he, he just kept going. Yeah, I mean, and to do it with the LMG is also a little impressive because that crosshair is thick, so. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. That's kind of it. That, that is, yeah, that's, that's, a good play. That, that's it. That's, that's it. it. I mean, TSM's we'll, done. Well, TSM's done. It was kind of a meaningless game for them. Very important for Empire, but they did the work, and mm -hmm. really we're just going to wait until you guys return later in the day for our remainder, remainder of the matches here in, in Group D. Well, that should be exciting. I'm looking forward to it, especially since now we're we're genuinely getting down to the wire. We've had a couple of teams either get knocked out or already qualify for playoffs, and mm -hmm. it, it didn't need the third day to get confirmed for any of them, but now we're sitting here at the last opportunity that some teams actually have to qualify. Obviously, what we'll see from the Group B matches for these next two will, will be pretty inconsequential. It will just mm -hmm. matter for seeding, but for both All groups, right. what? I will I will fight you on the inconsequential one. Because well, what do you mean? I'm saying for seeding. Uh, no, it is 
like for seeding, it's incredibly important at this event because it's a difference between playing like TL or BDS and, and a seed two. Like True. that could mean a semifinal placement, which means a big difference in money, a big difference in invitational points. I'm saying, right? I'm saying it's inconsequential aside from oh, the seeding. Yes. Okay, right. Right. Fair enough. That's what I mean. Yeah. I also think that like Space Station don't want to lose to Furia twice because it's like it's Furia. I wouldn't allow that to happen. Right? Either, like yeah. I mean, Furia is not known on a global scale as like a top team. I'm not saying they're bad, but like. You're Typically, you don't they're think, bad. Yeah, sure. Typically, right, Jesse, I don't think they're the best team, right? <laughs> are are they're they not bad? thought of them like that. No, they're not okay. bad. I actually <laughs> but I like, caught up. I caught up with uh, their coach Twister in the hallway, and uh, he, he watches the content that I make, and he's just like, "Thank you for cursing us to your predictions." And I'm just like, "I did it for you, buddy. It was only for you." <laughs> Space Station don't want to lose to that team, right? They don't want to lose twice, at least. That's true. Yeah. Nero lost the first time as well, so mm -hmm. time for Space Station to really just solidify that hold on the number one seed. Fury is going to have a hard time bumping themselves up in the standings with back-to-back -back games. We will be seeing both of those games coming up next, and we'll be switching out our analysts as well. So stay, stay tuned, and we'll be back with Group B.